no i want to thank all of you who have been following my videos on this channel and i want to urge all of you who are new on this channel to subscribe to this channel and i promise you you will have a wonderful video to follow up thank you the spirit is calling is beckoning is summoning it's a journey of depth and if we don't arrive at the destination that the spirit has in mind we will not look upon the sacred things that he wants to reveal and when we come back we'll be deficient with tools to build and so the whole generation might be lost one of the scary things i discovered when i started studying about church history was the fact that a whole generation can be wiped out and it doesn't affect god nor his agenda because between malachi and the rise of john in the wilderness were 400 years no matter how you want to calculate a generation at least four generations were lost and it didn't affect god's agenda because he's called the ancient of days and so it is possible for a generation to be wiped off because they don't discern the patterns and if you don't find it you cannot build you build because you have the pattern not because you are zealous not because you feel you are ready you build because patterns have been revealed to you. And so in Revelation 22 from verse 17, there's a holy summon. I'm trying to begin my journey from the team so that I don't get lost. He said, and the spirit and the bride say, come. <laughs> there are certain scriptures that are scary. But it will only scare you if you understand the weight. And so before I touch this scripture, maybe we should begin from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16. You know, when the Spirit calls you, you may not know how far you will journey. Because you don't even know where the Spirit dwells. There are few men that were given the opportunity in scripture to travel to the beginning. And so when you start interacting with men, you will find their depth based on where they talk from. Because the depth you speak from is what determines your rank in the spirit. You don't have rank in the spirit because you're intelligent. You don't even have rank in the spirit because your exegesis is correct. If your exegesis is correct, you are a discipler. But when you want to bet the things of the spirit, you will need to journey to the depths where the spirit dwells. Because you are as ancient as how deep you travel. And so when you study the Bible... There are three depths that was revealed to humankind as touching the dwellings of God. The shallow, the most shallow of them all was what Moses gave in, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Moses said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that was the first time a man was permitted to journey beyond time. The first time a man traveled outside of the spectrum of time to be given the opportunity to look at the civilization of spirit. How do these beings operate? Because you may have been trained by Facebook, by YouTube, or by BBC, CNN. You will begin to attempt to judge spirit civilization from human civilization. You will be wrong a thousand times. And so the men that God gave the power to teach mortals how to live their lives, what he did was that he drew them out of time back to the foundation of reality. And so when Moses spoke, he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the first man that traveled deep enough to bring us words and information that existed before time. Now, if Moses had the liberty to speak, maybe one of the things he would have told you is how the world that exists beyond 3D looks like. Because we can't think outside of 3D. You can only think three dimensions because that's what the visible realm is. But there was somebody that looked where God stood before he started creating even the spirit realm. And so when that kind of person wants to talk to you about God, you may need to have a meeting beyond the stars. But in order to help us, he crystallized it and he left it. He said God created the heavens and the earth. He left it. He didn't talk about the heavens. He now began to talk about recreation. He said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And so that was what Moses brought to us. And then there was another man that also told us about the, the beginning. His name was John. He said, that which was 
from the beginning, which our eyes have seen. We heard, our eyes saw, and he said, we looked upon, and our hands handled. No, in this case, he's trying to show you how the material world crystallized from the supernatural world. So, first of all, it was in the beginning. Then it came from the beginning. You heard it. You saw it. You now handled it. So, what you are touching here is a crystallization of a reality that once upon a time was intangible. And so, there is a technology and a protocol that governs how spiritual things crystallize. How they become tangible from intangible. All of that is secluded. It. He just told us that we handled. Because there are certain things you don't discuss among people. If you want to see it, you too will be someone. I'm trying to tell you why he said come. Because there are some things that we won't teach. You know, when John heard the voice of the seven thunders, he wanted to write. He said, no, this one is not a message. This one is for those who are summoned. Not everything is taught. So Moses didn't tell you what the heavens look like. John didn't tell you how immateriality was crystallized to materiality. Those ones, it is those who are summoned that are permitted to look upon it. And so in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, Paul was the one who traveled the deepest. No wonder he said, I'm a wise master builder. No wonder he said, I have taught you the whole counsel of God. Who talks like that? How do you know the whole counsel of God? Because he went where nobody went to. And this was what Paul said. He said, concerning God, he said, who only? Because when he entered that civilization, there was no other person. None existed. Who only had immortality? This was the first man that attempted to tell us some of the things that happened in that realm. Because Moses didn't say. John didn't say. When John wanted to write, they forbade him. Paul was the first person that gave us a glimpse that in the ancient civilization of spirits, one of the things that defined them is immortality. Yeah. That means in that realm, death does not exist. It has no power. Because the, 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 the energy that rules in that realm is too strong for death to be allowed participation. And he said, here, there is immortality. This is not just talking about cessation. This is talking about a state of a lack of corruption. That means Paul also went for that to tell us that this realm is the realm of the originals. Nothing is corrupt here. Everything you see here, that is how it will always be forever and ever. And he made another statement. He said, in this civilization, the ambience is light. He said, God dwells in light that is unapproachable. Now, what Paul was trying to teach us here is that there is somewhere beyond heaven. Because if you, if you read the Bible, you may just assume God is in heaven. If God is in heaven, then the universe is bigger than the creator. <laughs> yeah. hmm. You were the one that gave the topic. <laughs> if all of God is in heaven, that means the heaven contains God. But God is bigger than heaven because even heaven is in God. So, what Paul was telling us here is a community that is beyond creation. This is a community that was not created. This is a community that you exist in yourself because God is light and God dwells in light. That means the house of God is God himself. Because what the way God exists is that God comes out and covers himself. So God lives inside God before the beginning was created. But you see, when God wanted to allow some level of creativity, he wanted to allow himself you know, when you want to have fun, you go and watch football. You play cricket. You, you go to Dubai. When a god wants to have fun, what he does is that he displays power. Power, power. So, as he dwelt in himself for aeons, because even here, there's no time. Because the energy here forbids time. That's why you can't cut time in eternity. The intensity is too much. So, where God dwells here, there's no time. And so, what God decided to do was that he wanted to have pleasure. You know, when John was carried to heaven, he said, all things were created for thy pleasure. So, when God...